Yeah, me. That's a neat little sticker that I found on my phone. All right, so, but anyway, uh, welcome back to another Sunday School lesson. We are on chapter 22 of the Devotional Doctrine series called Imperfectly Becoming Perfect. And it will piggyback off of what we learned last week as well about uh, being born again and how uh, the Holy Spirit will help you throughout your walk. And so before we begin, let us pray. Uh, thank you so much, Heavenly Father, for giving us this time to uh, just go over your word, Lord Heavenly Father. I pray that whatever you have to reveal to us, today, Lord. I pray that um, it comes uh, straight from your words, Lord Heavenly Father, and your truth, and not just from mine, Lord Heavenly Father. So I thank you so much, and in Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, so this um, this uh, devotional uh, starts off with, um, like, uh, you could say a story. So the author of this book, he mentioned that um, he this one uh, girl that was being baptized, uh, be you could say before she was being baptized, she spoke a phrase that which shocked um the author of this book it says oh what she said was i want to do this as a way to pay god back for all he's done for me and so you you might be saying you know mike why is that so shocking well i mean it, it's it's everything is shocking about that one little phrase because i mean when we think about it is christianity a religion or what is christianity and so just like a little bit about religion it says this it says religions usually come to the same conclusion the key to righteousness is some kind of combination of faith and works beliefs may, may matter but deeds matter more and so pretty much a religion is basically more about what i can do to be forgiven of my sins and so how does christianity differ from that well christianity is a blend of faith and works but it it's more toward the faith aspect now instead of the works aspect because with what we believe in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 it says this it says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and so since we all sinned that means that we have fallen short of God's glory and so there is nothing we can do in order to uh, you could say earn God's favor and so what then if we can't work to gain God's favor what can we do and that of course is fa through faith only faith which in um, Ephesians chapter uh, 2 chapter 2 verse 8 through 9 it says for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not as a result of works so that no one may boast and so pretty much what religion says is, look at me, look at what I can do to forgive myself of my sins. Look how righteous I've become uh, to be forgiven of my sins. Or to, I guess you could say, show that I've been forgiven of my sins because of my change. But with us as Christians, we saying, look at what God has done through our lives to save me from my sins. And so, that's it. <laughs> that's pretty much it. And so... But then the thing about us Christians is like we we tend to focus more on the 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 faith aspect instead of the work aspect, and so I mean they both go hand in hand. Don't get me wrong, they both go hand in hand, and so some focus too much on the works, which is the religion side, and some focus too much on uh, faith, which of course where's your proof of your works, or you could say of your faith. Sorry, <laughs> you have um, you have faith, but what do you have to show for that? And so, so Mike, did, did I just, did I just contradict myself with saying that as like, so that no one may boast? So how, how, how is that possible? How is that so possible that we can have faith and little works? The thing is, like I said, this will tie into what we uh, learned last week about being born again and how the Holy Spirit will empower you to uh, do good for his glory. I mean, Look at this. The verse right after Ephesians chapter 2 through 9, it says this. So we're on Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. When, remember when I said he planned out your life already? Well, he planned for you to do good works as well. Not just as a result of, you know, your Pretty much that is a result of your faith as well. <laughs> and so so that people would know that you are pretty much of God because uh, you have faith in Him and you have 
like the works to prove that you know you are a Christian as well. And so, like, I, I, I'm not sure your point of view on this, but I mean, I, I did get stuck in it as well, saying you know I have must be a good person in order to be um you know God's um ch like to be justified was justified means like to to make right and so and also be to be sanctified, which is to be set apart in God's family in in this example of what sanctified means and so I mean I'm, I'm pretty sure you may have been confused by it too but I'm like it, it says this so if we do have this idea it says this and I cannot explain it any better than this devotional doctrine series so I'll read it for us it says there is a damaging idea floating around that says God saved you now what are you going to do for him this is a recipe for failure if you come to the table believing you can do anything for God in your own strength or repay Him on any level you have already lost, you are back to confessing your self-dependent spiritual death from which Jesus saved you. As a, so what are we supposed to do then? Good works? But here's the thing. When we are commanded to do good works, which we are, it's not because we're trying to earn anything. Justification is not the fruit of good works. Rather, good works are the fruit of justification. And of course, we read that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. It says, They are evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, proof that our faith is genuine, living, and active. We seek to do good as a reflection of who Christ has made us through the power of the Spirit's transforming work in our lives from gratitude and love we feel from being accepted by God, not so we might be accepted by Him. And so pretty much that is exactly what this like message is about. It's not about what we have done to be forgiven of our sin. It's what God has done through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in our lives. So please don't get that confused anymore. Now you know. All right? You brush teeth. <laughs> all right, y'all. So that was the message. I hope you were blessed by it. And so let's go good to God. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for just uh, giving us this time to go through your word. Lord, Heavenly Father, whatever... Uh, I may have said that is not according to your truth, Lord. May you just bury that, Lord Heavenly Father. But whatever is the truth, may you um, uh, help people bind that around their necks so that they may know, uh, they may not be deceived, Lord Heavenly Father, and that they may know uh, what you are doing in their lives, Lord Heavenly Father, in our lives, and just in the people to come, Lord Heavenly Father. This is good news worth sharing, Lord, and I pray that you give us the strength to do so, Lord Heavenly Father, and also the strength to just continue living on through these times, Lord. I know maybe your plan is not now, Lord Heavenly Father, but each day is a step you uh, help us take in order to achieve your will in our lives, Lord. And so I thank you, and I pray you be with everyone who has heard, Lord Heavenly Father. Not just those who have heard, but those who have not heard, and those who, um, or are in this world that still has time to believe in you, Lord. And so I thank you so much. I left them everyone up to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, y'all. God bless and see y'all next week.